Holy smokes. Pitt has just landed one of the biggest recruits, if not the biggest recruit, of the Jeff Capel era. Dior Johnson is coming to Pitt. Folks, we are going to talk about this, how this transpired, what to look for, why this was a easy move for Jeff Capel and his staff to make, and what this does to Pitt's outlook this season. Huge news in Pitt men's basketball. It's coming up today on this episode of Locked On Pit. Our Locked On Pit, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Folks, welcome to a great episode of the Locked On Pit Podcast. Everyone should be excited right now. As always, I'm your host, Dick Fairball. As always, if you are watching this, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, do all those great things. If you are listening to this, make sure to review, give feedback. Huge commitment today, though, for Pit. However, before we get into that, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has more sports information than anywhere. Else, bet online as you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online where the game starts. And folks, wow, who saw it coming? Who saw Jeff Capel pulling this one out of the bag of tricks? There has never been a time where you haven't been somewhat surprised by some things that could potentially happen, right? And I, I mean, we have no clue prior to yesterday, and I mean this, we had no clue prior to yesterday that the Or Johnson was even on Pitt's radar, let alone potentially committing to Pitt. And now, here we are, not even 24 hours later. On the flip side of that, and Dior Johnson's a Pittsburgh Panther, folks. That is the type of switch up we've had here. I'm not even sure what to say uh, about everything coming through here right now. Because Dior Johnson is a talent that Pitt has not had here in a very long time. In a very long time. This is a phenomenal player. A guy with great bounce, great vision, good explosiveness, can shoot the mid-range, definitely good at the rack, has a up-and-down three-point shot, but when he's on, he's good. He's got great length. He can be a disruptor, great rebounder at the position he plays. This guy is talented to the max. You look at this guy and you say, wow, this is a guy that should be going to a blue blood or a near blue blood. Syracuse and Oregon, those make sense, right? Syracuse, you're a hometown kid. You get to play for Jim Beheim. You fit that model, too, you know, of a point guard in the Syracuse system. <laughs> Dior Johnson kind of fits that. He really does. He fits what you look for in a general Syracuse model. And then you look at then you look at a team like Oregon, who definitely has a need in the backcourt, and they really needed him. But then they get two vet guards, Will Richardson comes back, and all of a sudden, folks, you have Pitt potentially coming in here after he decommits. I don't know what to think. It's so tough to know what to think. Because Pitt came out of nowhere. It felt like Mississippi State had the upper hand with him visiting there. But no, Pitt is going to be the one that ends up coming here. And so, folks, when you look at this, what, what a land for the Panthers, right? What a land for the Panthers. Very talented player. 
that's immediately going to slot into a starting role. I know that this team has a lot of veteran guards uh, and that they're ready to play with, you know, Nellie Cummings, Greg Elliott, Jamarius Burton, and Nike Sabandi. But Dior Johnson is a talent you can't sit. He's going to be a starter in this program. This is a guy that comes in and he gives you some insurance, I think, actually as well in this regard that, well, what if Nike Sabandi isn't the player we knew he was? before he tours ACL? What if he loses a step? Because remember, when Nike Sabandi is at his best, it's all about his explosiveness. It's all about his athleticism, creating shots, getting down the lane. That's his MO. Dior Johnson has special athleticism for the position. And so this is a guy that brings out a lot of very special traits in terms of what you want at the point guard position. And this is huge for Pitt. Now, I think we can talk potential starting lineups here. And I think the one that makes the most sense to me would be, you know, Dior Johnson, Nellie Cummings, Jamarius Burton, Blake Henson, John Hughley. I think that's the likely starting five. Now, Sabandi could get in there if he plays well enough. I guess any of the guards could, right? Theoretically, if any of the guards play well. If Greg Elliott's really playing well, too. You can get him in there. I think that this is where, though, you look at Pitt and you say, man, we, we t- we've talked about this before that, you know, the mix and the match of the lineups, right? You know, Pitt's going to want to have opportunities to go small if they really want to. Boy, they can do that. That's for sure. They can go small this year. They want to have a shooter's lineup. They probably have that this year. I think the Diaz Graham twins was a big addition in that regard. And I think, you know, Dior Johnson, he's an inconsistent three point shooter, uh, doesn't have the best shot selection in the world, and that can really kind of get under your skin a little bit. Um, So it's like, you know, what do you do in that regard? I think it's tough. But I also think that Pitt, when you look at it overall, is going to come out of this with a lot more optimism. Because you have five legitimate guards now that you can play, and they're all going to play. I mean, all five of these guys are going to play in some regard. They all fill a different role, right? You know, you have your two-and-a-half combo guards, because Nelly Cummings is kind of a combo guard, but kind of a point guard, and who knows. But Dior Johnson's probably more of a point guard. Obviously, Nelly Cummings uh, fits into kind of a role like that, too. Greg Elliott is certainly a a pure shooting guard. And then you have Nike Sabandi and Jamaris Burton as your combo guards. And the cool thing about that is now, you know, Jamaris Burton doesn't have to be a main ball handler anymore. Nellie Cummings is your secondary ball handler. Or Dior Johnson could be, depending on how the offense runs as well. Both really good passers. So this is going to open up so many things, I think, for this pit team. And and I think they're going to look really strong coming out of this. All right, folks, I do want to continue to talk about this, why I thought this was a no-brainer move for Jeff Capel, despite some of the rumblings you might have heard. However, first, let me let you know about BetOnline, because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL Finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, the fighting news from MMA, UFC, and boxing. Bet online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Pit Podcast, and here we go. That. You look at this pit team and you say, a lot of talent this year, but a lot of boomer bust potential. And that's always kind of been the thing with this pit team. Even before Dior Johnson came in to the equation, it was like, what is Pitt actually going to do? First of all, I understand the concerns that he's played for 10 different high schools. He's decommitted twice. And so... You're not feeling like, wow, uh, this is super close to us and, and that this is, you know, coming right down the pike. 
you don't feel like that Dior Johnson is necessarily a slam dunk. And he's fallen all the way down to like 47 on 24-7 sports. I think that's underrated him. Um, but I think when you look at him, Dior Johnson is a no-brainer for Jeff Capel at this stage in his career. Because let me let me put this out. When you are a coach, like Jeff Capel was, coming into this year, you hadn't been very good in terms of your player management. I think that's been the biggest issue here. You had a lot of talent come through. You've had Justin Champagne, Xavier Johnson, Trey McGowan, Zadis Tony. The, the question has always been, well, how do you manage those guys? How do you manage this personality? So Pitts had talent, Femi Odukale, like all these guys that have come through and have transferred out. These are talented basketball players. The bigger question has always been, well, can you manage the personalities? Dior Johnson, a guy with a lot of social media fame, a guy that's been hyped up for a few years now, one of the top players, has a big social media following, obviously has a sizable NIL deal. So, so he's going to be a different type of, of guy that you really haven't had in a while. But at, at this stage in his career, you know, this is Jeff Capel's last hoorah at Pitt. It really is. And, like, when I look at it from this perspective and I say, okay, it is often not going to have opportunities to get guys like this. Moreover, Pitt actually is never in the position to be the driver's seat of this. And they were, and they landed Dior Johnson, which makes it even more compelling. But you're not in a position when you've had as many straight losing seasons as Pitt has had. When you probably, if you're Jeff Capel, if you don't do well this year, you are you're hitting the road, right? You're gone. You're not going to have a job next year if you don't do well this year. There are stakes to this thing. Pitt has to has to get down and win this year. That's the crux of this. What is the worst that could happen here? And, we, and I talked about this yesterday. The worst that can happen for Jeff Capel and this staff is that, quite honestly, Pitt ends up self-destructing like they have the past four seasons under Jeff Capel, and he's gone. For Pitt's program, this is a no-lose situation. The best thing that happens is that Dior Johnson comes on campus, ends up being a folk hero, leads them to the NCAA tournament, and Pitt basketball is back, baby. Jeff Capel saves his job. Everything is looking good. Worst-case scenario, this is completely flops. Dior Johnson heads to the NBA. it would be the talent that he is. Jeff Capel's gone. Pitt's looking for a new coach. And we're really just where we would have been regardless. This is the truth. It's a risk worth taking. We don't even have, outside of the constant movement, it's not like this kid has a criminal record or, or anything like that, right? It's not like he has these excruciatingly red flags that are just blaring at you. You say, oh, no, I, he's, he's going to be a problem in that regard. We don't even know if he's a locker room problem. Why did he continue to move around? You know, was there circumstance in his life that forced that? Uh, I think his decommits completely make sense. From Oregon, they have three veterans in the backcourt. He was a five-star, one-and-done guy. He's going to want to get that playing time elsewhere. Like, that makes sense, right? It makes sense. So, I, I think for this situation... It's just about Pitt battening down the hatches and going for it. Just go for it. There's nothing, and I mean this, there is nothing that will hurt Pitt out of this. Straight up. 
Pitt's got this opportunity, and they seized it and they took it. I think that's the very important thing here. Huge land. Huge land for Pitt. And it's a no-brainer. Changes the outlook on the season if things go well. And it gives Jeff Capel a lifeline. Again, you don't see guys like Dior Johnson come around the hatches very often in the middle of June. A 2022 recruit like this. You don't see guys like this come around very often. Pitt's not in a position to turn a kid like this away. And Pitt might be the position exactly where he needs to be. I think Pitt is ready to go. I think that's what Jeff Cable was looking at here and saying, what do I have to lose? What do I have to lose? I'm going to go get this guy that I know is a very talented player. He's going to be an NBA player. He's a one and done. So it's not going to affect my 2023 recruiting class. So if this thing works out, because remember, it looks like Pitt's on their way to getting Carlton Carrington as well, who is committing on Wednesday. It looks like Pitt's likely to get him. So the 2023 recruiting class is going to start out with him and Marlon Barnes. And then they're in on guys like Papa Kate and Jalen Curry, and, and they're building a good 23 class. There's something maybe brewing here. And Dior Johnson is the lifeline you need this year. You need to win this year. You have to win this year. And it just helped them a lot. But I want to talk about the readjusted expectations. What does the team look like now? How does this affect other guys, especially John Hughley? What does this look like? For this team. But first, we're going to go to a quick break, everyone. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Locked On Pit Podcast. We're talking about Dior Johnson committing to the University of Pittsburgh. As mercurial as Dior Johnson has been, this is a crazy outcome. I don't think anyone thought he was going to end up here at Pitt, but it seems this is what's going to happen. That Pitt is going to land Dior Johnson, and it changes the season. It really does. Because of the player Dior Johnson is and what he brings to the table, it's just a no-brainer for Pitt and what they're doing right now when you look at what they could possibly need and really what they're actually looking for, right? Because they're looking for a great point guard. They're looking for three-level scorers. They're looking for great passers. They're looking for guys that change the way the fabric of the team is made. And that's the truth. Pitt is looking for these guys. And they just found one of them. In the middle of June, in one of the weirdest circumstances to ever come around, as far as I'm concerned. It's got him. And so when you get a passer like this that has this type of magnetism, it's going to open things underneath for a guy like John Hughley. And I think maybe this is where it comes out to me as important. Because he's he's not a sniper, but he's a guy that's quick, explosive, gets to the basket with ease. So he's going to open things up on the perimeter. Of course, he's a guy, you know, one of these top guys. He's got a lot of flashy stuff in his game. You could see it on his highlight reel. It's some unbelievable wow moments that jump out at you right away uh, that you love, that you just absolutely love in terms of what this guy can do. Uh, and it's really fun to watch. He's got great handles. Um, he's, he's got a great ability to finish. With both hands at the basket, can make some really tough things look a lot easier than they should be. He's a special talent in that regard. Guy is is just special there. But you also look at what he can do for the rest of the team. And it's hard not to be a little excited about it. You know, he, he's going to get a decent NIL deal, but this is a guy that's a real difference maker. He's going to open up things for John Hughley. When you add in the shooters that Pitts added this offseason, right, like Diaz Graham, Jorge Diaz Graham, Greg Elliott, when you add in these guys, well, the shooting aspect of it is also going to be there. You're going to have more kick-out attempts. This could open up things for those guys even more. 
but especially on the perimeter. The catch-and-shoot guys. Greg Elliott could eat here. You're going to work Nelly Cummings into a little bit of an off-ball role every now and I think for Jamarius Burton, this is great as well. You get ISO action with him. Let him use his physicality. You can get him open. Really exacerbate his mid-range game. You can do a lot of different things with the Or Johnson on the roster now that you couldn't. You could have a really good screen game. Obviously, I think you still need to worry about what's going to happen down low. Uh, you know, what's the, where's the rim protection coming in, right? You lost the rim protection in Mogi, and you really never replaced it. Uh, so that is something to look at, right? The floor on this team is still a question. Obviously, Blake Henson's probably going to be the starter. But what happens if Jorge Diaz Graham isn't ready? Because there's a lot of pressure going to be placed on that guy. Or what if Will Jeffers doesn't take that leap? Again, a lot of pressure being placed on those guys. So I think the four is still a question. Uh, I think that you're going to get decent minutes out of either Fede Federico or Guillermo Diaz Graham at the five to back up John Hugo. But I think that is the one thing you really look at here and you say, well, this is where the question really is. How the heck does the four work out? And I think it's going to be the biggest thing to watch throughout the offseason. I think that you have to look at, one, how Blake Henson looks coming back after two years because this is not going to be an easy thing. You know, medical complications as well. It wasn't just like he got injured. It was medical stuff that kind of called him out of it. So when I look at it, you know, I think that's a concern. I think that's a reasonable concern to have if you're a Pitt fan. But I think Dior Johnson, we talked about, you know, raising the ceiling and the floor, certainly raises the ceiling, certainly raises the floor. If he is dialed in and ready to go, Folks, Pitt has an opportunity to really make some noise. Like, really. I mean, he is going to become this team's most talented player. He's going to help out everyone else on the floor. It's just going to be how bought in is he? There are, you know, the one thing you hear is the stretches that he goes on and off for. Sometimes he's out of it, gets angry. It's the mental stuff with him. You know, it does is that something he develops? I, I'm... You know, it's a question. I mean, it is 100% a question. And so if, if Sabandi's coming off the bench, I, I think this is a good opportunity for him to get into that role. And, and you have competition breeding among these guards. And then it's going to be all about the bigs. But I, I, I do think that Dior Johnson, Nelly Cummings, and Jamarius Burton is a really cool backcourt. Uh, as just a starting three, and then you have Henson and Hughley down low. Uh, the question is going to be how good Henson is coming back. You know, where's his defense? That was one of his calling cards. His mid-range game and bounce was something that really stood out on his tape. You know, and where does John Hughley go from here? You know, I, I think that this is another question. How good is John Hughley? Because this is a guy that is extremely, and I mean this, this is a guy that's extremely talented, that already has been really productive, has gone up against guys like Armando Baycott and done great things against them, but he needs to get better with his passing, better with some discipline, needs to become a better rim protector, better as a screen setter. Like There are all these things he can improve upon, and he wasn't even scratching the surface of where he could be, but he can be a monster there on that baseline on the elbow. This is a guy that could be incredible this year. And I think with all the pressure being taken off him, I think John Hughley has all conference capabilities here, folks. So I think I'm very excited to see him as well, of course. He was the foundation of this pit program. And now they've landed guys like Dior Johnson, and it should be a lot easier for John Hughley this year. Completely changes, of course, the expectations for this year, though, Dior Johnson, a huge land. We'll see how he meshes in with everyone. That'll be a question of what happens and where everything goes from here. But this is about as good of a land as you could expect from Jeff Capel at this point, his highest rated recruit. And I think it's a wild card. It's the risk you need to take on this entire team is a wild card. And that's really what it comes down to right now. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. We'll talk more about football recruiting as well, Carlton Carrington. We'll talk about all of this stuff later this week with Dior Johnson. 
commits to pit huge news for the Panthers. As always, folks, thanks for listening. As always, hail.